finally the time for this uh, this interview. I know you're really busy um, uh, within Heineken, and we uh, we do appreciate it. And uh, I think the rep council members will as well when they uh, uh, see the kind of things that we cover. So thank you for that. Has there been any kind of fundamental changes in what you do or how you do it? Change will never stop, either organisationally, functionally, in terms of the thinking around what we what we do. So that will always uh, change without question. I think that the need for, if I think of what we do and I think of our function, I think the need is to shape that future change and say how do we how do we want what we do to evolve or how do we need it to evolve in order to better support what the organisational needs are. And that for me is the biggest challenge that we've that we've got. And it goes back to this idea that the, the reputation isn't about what you say, it's about what you do as an organisation. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if you talk about reputation and you talk about um, what it is, it's about the, the actions of a company, not the words of a company. And therefore, the, the consequent impact on us as a function and what we do is enormous. And that's where we need to shape the, the future change of the, certainly the function. So the idea of communication, um, I, I think, is, is important. But it's not something that we say is what we do. It's a much, much broader issue. Uh, uh, the idea that reputation isn't communication mm. is a really, really strong and important one. Uh, and you've outlined very clearly what your role is and how it's changed. Um, what specific challenges does that create? You know, uh, in terms of uh, you know, working with an organisation of this size and this scale? You know, what are the kind of things you've got to overcome in order to achieve the objectives that you very clearly articulate? So I, I think ultimately it's all about quality of decision making. So I think it's all about have we taken the decision as a group of management with knowledge about what our stakeholders are thinking and about what the, the impact of the decision could be if we have it done that. Mm -hmm. And ultimately I think the benefit of, of doing that uh, and just acting as a check and a, mm -hmm. and a mm -hmm. balance mm -hmm. or bringing new information to the table which make the, which make the decision perhaps a better one is a really, uh, is a really uh, important part of the role. Um, and I think, you know, when, when people are talking so much about the convergence of these roles with uh, other parts of the, the C-suite, as it's called. I think that role, that kind of uh, outside world in, check, balance, challenge, advise, influence, that whole kind of package that we as a function should be bringing to the table, I think we would risk losing that at, at our peril mm. in that debate about should we or should we not integrate with other parts of the mm -hmm. of the C-suite? And Heineken is obviously a very global organisation. You work in many markets all over the world. You know, high degree of diversity in terms of political, uh, cultural, and, and, and economic environments in which you work. Does that uh, does that present specific uh, challenges from the point of view of corporate relations? Yeah, every day, and that's one of the beauties of the job. Uh, the the idea that one size does not fit all is I would say in our business which has uh, 70 markets, so we have operations in 70 markets, uh, it's a significant number, it's a, it's a differentiating factor versus our competitors. Uh, but the dark competitors are in many markets as well. So the, the idea that cultural difference has to define how you operate in that culture, but at the same time having to be consistent with the rest of the world and, the, and an ideal which part of the world would look at and say that's what we expect of you as an organization globally but locally the expectation may be different that's something that we that we struggle with every day and if it does what well, if those challenges given those challenges that you've indicated uh, that you face if you're going to work in a diverse in a diverse uh, uh, range of countries and markets, how do you overcome them? What are the kind of what are the what are the uh, what are the tools or what are the what are the kind of qualities that you need in order to uh, reconcile the differences that you have 
from uh, one market to the next. Really, L listen and, and try and understand. I accept that you're not going to be able to have 70 different approaches for 70 different markets, but be prepared to flex the approach when, when you can in order to, to meet the needs of the markets. Mm. I certainly think that this idea of inclusive growth is going to be a really powerful idea over the next five to, to ten years. The idea that organisations like Heineken, uh, like uh, other big multinationals, um, need to grow with communities and countries and support their growth as much as supporting the, the company growth, I think is a really, really strong idea gaining momentum. It's different, I think, than the classic um, sustainability agenda. It's not um, how we're going to do CO2 or how we're going to do energy or water. It's something more inclusive than that and it's about how do we as organisations create value and grow with the communities and the countries that we're, we're in. So I think there'll be a big change there. Um, I also think there will be a, a change in the, the idea of reputation and the, the impact that that has on uh, companies like us. I, th I see it all the time, so I see it with all of my peers when we get together. The discussion around reputation is deeper, uh, more meaningful, uh, has more impact generally on their organisations when I listen to them uh, talk. And I think that is a trend that will continue. And I, and I think if that trend continues, then the, the behaviour, and I'm not being critical when I say current behaviour, mm. because I think organisations generally are extremely uh, well behaved, but, but the behaviour of organisations will change to become much more in sync with those uh, communities. And I think there will be a, a convergence whilst accepting that organisations will never ever be able to deliver everything that all of their stakeholders mm. want, and probably nor should they. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed. You have to uh, address crises when they occur. I mean, any business this large is going to periodically face situations where people are critical, um, where people uh, view uh, the behaviour not to be in line with their expectations. I mean, would you be able to tell me a little bit about how you approach uh, uh, crises when they come along? The principles generally about mm -hmm. managing crises, about clear lines of communication, about great quick communication between markets and head office or vice versa, uh, about having an exceptional supply chain. And uh, honestly, supply chains today are great. Within Heineken, we have an outstanding supply chain. The traceability and trackability of what we have uh, in terms of our SKUs, our, our stock keeping units, uh, is is second to none. Um, so there are some basic principles, and then one principle I think is, is really important, and it's difficult, is judgment. Mm -hmm. You know, to judge what to say, when to say it, to who to say it, and how to say it. And, and there, that comes with a lot of, uh, of experience. Yeah. In fact, I, I think there was something with regards to dogfighting uh, uh, relatively recently. It'd be great if you would mind just sharing some of the lessons you feel you learned, or some of the things that you did that could be useful for other people uh, to be aware of. So the, the dog fighting the dog fighting issue was interesting. A because we never ever saw it coming. The uh, potted history is that um, we uh, had a promotion in a nightclub in Mongolia. Uh, in Mongolia dog fighting is legal. Two nights later in that same nightclub there was uh, a dog fight. Two nights after our promotion our banners haven't been taken down. A picture was taken. Two years after the dog fight, the picture of the dog fighting with the Heineken banners suddenly appeared on the internet, and you know how quickly that went. Uh, inc I mean, incredible uh, response to it. Uh, I mean, multi, multi millions of views in a few days. So the reaction to that, you, your question was about the, the response oh, to the crisis. Yeah, yeah. uh, I mean, the response to that was uh, immediate, but it was we had to find our way because we'd never dealt with a significant online crisis. 
So trying to understand how we dealt with that in real time was a real learning for us. Uh, we responded, um, I think, ultimately, in absolutely a, a model way, and most of the, the commentary on that episode now you, you see reflects that. But we responded individually to everybody who was posting. We used our, uh, at that point, I think, 10 million Facebook fans to, to talk about what the situation was and what we were doing. We uh, formed a, a partnership with uh, an animal welfare organization, international welfare organization, to, to, to say, this is what we're, mm. we're doing, this mm. is uh, our stance on animal welfare, to have them mm. make some uh, sort of endorsement to try and have the understanding. So in, in all aspects, it was a very different crisis yeah. and, and now we have to understand that we operate in that world. So the implication of that particular crisis has been that what we've done is we've changed um, our system of alert and identification and monitoring of, of those sort of issues in that whole uh, in, in internet space. So in the digital space we're now much better prepared for it. Political model with regards to uh, 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 corporate relations, i.e., the idea of, of, of focusing on specific issues and building campaigns around those issues. Would you mind just tell me a little bit more about why that is something that you see as being valid and positive from your perspective? It's really trying to understand what what is the view of that issue externally. Why is it important? What is the what is the uh, the real uh, issue that they are External, that, that our stakeholders externally mm -hmm. are uh, complaining about. What it is that we can do on it internally? Is it really an issue for us? Can we change? Should we change? And then if we believe that it is, then it's about saying, how do we mobilize our stakeholders? How do we give them um, information on uh, the issue? How do we propose an alternative? Because actually the idea of going out there and just saying it's wrong, it's wrong, it's wrong, we don't like it, we don't like it, we don't like it, doesn't actually help us. So we need to be able to say why it's either why we believe it's either wrong or won't work, mm -hmm. and to be able to provide some sort of alternatives. And the idea of identifying stakeholders who have a vested interest also in that same issue, mobilizing them together, so not just the voice of the company, but the voice of the industry and other impacted industries and trade associations, and the media, and the media is a very broad term now with, with social mm. media, but mobilizing those, it becomes a very, very powerful um, uh, movement. But at its heart, it's really understanding the issue, mm. it's understanding mm. the impact on the business, and it's then saying, what do we want to achieve? Be very clear about the outcome. And who do we need to link with and mobilize in order to get our position across? And the I, honestly, I think the most important thing is that at the start, you ask yourself whether we should do something in order to change. Do they have a point? And if they do, let's work out what we need to do differently in order to change. Let's not mm -hmm. oppose for a moment mm -hmm. opposition mm -hmm. sake. Heineken is clearly on with lots of very valuable brands, and those brands require marketing. And I would imagine that you do work quite closely with the marketing function within uh, within Heineken. Um, is that the case? And if so, how, how does that kind of dynamic work between the two between the two functions? We have to, just as a matter of you know daily working, link with our colleagues in, in marketing. But they are tasked with something actually, which is the same as us and at the same time it's quite different. So the, the growth and the health of the business relies on what they do just as much as it relies on what we do. Uh, there is a commercial reality that they are faced with in terms of uh, marketing and selling beer in, mm -hmm. in our case. For us, it's about making sure that the organisation operates, behaves, uh, takes action where necessary on issues which typically would not be first on their agenda. It's not what they think about on a daily basis. 
And our job is to make sure that where possible, necessary, uh, and uh, to our benefit, those external ideas are brought in and linked into the marketing uh, function. And I do think that ultimately, if you uh, operate in that way, then the idea of kind of mutual respect, mutual uh, balance, mutual challenge gets you to a better place as an organization. I think you would lose the objectivity, and it's certainly in a consumer organization, you would lose the objectivity that an independent, strong, uh, externally focused corporate relations function brings to that organization. I think the, the dilemmas that come to the table in terms of the commercial agenda versus the, uh, the independence and governance mm -hmm. agenda are, are too big to have those in the same place. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. you want some objective challenge. And whilst the CEO would undoubtedly arbitrate in that situation, to only have one voice at the table that articulates the external perspective um, which would be a marketing function in mm -hmm. the case mm -hmm. you talked about, I think is not what a modern uh, organisation needs, nor what its stakeholders would expect. Looking through the prism of your CEO, what do you think are the what, 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 what do you what, what do you think evidence? An effective corporate relations function from his perspective. What are the, actually not just your CEO, any CEO, sure. what, what, are the, what are the signs of effectiveness or success relative to what you do and your people and your team around the world? So I think it's about whether we are taking the right decisions with the right level of information on the right issues. So do, do they, as CEOs, have that external input that allows them and their teams to take good decisions. Does the function argue and fight for what it as an organization believes is right? Because I said earlier, you, you, cannot, you cannot please all of your stakeholders all of the time. So that judgment about where you fight for what you believe is right but you also internally fight for what, where you think something needs to be changed is, uh, is important. Third, I think it's evidence that the actions that the organisation has taken, where it has changed its stance or its policy, have had the positive effect either on reputation or on the commercial agenda or on consumer perception that we said it would, because that makes the decision good because it's worked from an external stakeholder perspective and it's worked from a business perspective. Um, and I think there would be some general things that, that uh, certainly my CEO would look for, which is, are we taking a broad enough view of the world and are we looking um, down the line? So are we saying our, th our next three years looks like this and along the way, if this is our agenda, these are the things we're going to come across. So we need to be prepared for X and Y and Z because these are the issues that will come to us because of the, the route we are proposing to take. And the thinking behind how we should address or partner with stakeholders on those issues is something that we are now, I think that's the next phase of where we're, we're moving to. It's kind of reputation anticipation. Mm. And it's really important and high on uh, my CEO's agenda to address, to identify and address those issues early, ahead of time. <clears throat> Again, so that we are taking the right decisions when we come to that point in our, in our journey. Mm. You mentioned earlier on that um, you know, corporate relations now is uh, you know, it's a very strategic role with a with a seat if you like at the uh, in, in cases of best practice with a seat at the top table um, what are the kind of individual characteristics someone needs within your function if they're going to sit at that top table sustainably what are the kind of uh, aspects of what they do and, and their behavior that are, that are kind of important uh, in order for that to be something that is valued 
from a leadership perspective? What I think the leaders of our function need to bear in mind as a consequence of where I think we need to take this function. So it's about leadership, for sure. It is about three words, amongst others, but three words for me are really important. So it's about challenge. So do those leaders have the ability to challenge when they see a decision or a part of a decision-making process that is not uh, with integrity, uh, irresponsible or unsustainable. So that challenge in an appropriate way to help shape the argument is, is for me a real leadership principle. Influence is the second. Um, do we shape the argument, do we shape the issue in such a way that we influence the organisation and our colleagues within it to change the way that we are heading as a business. And if you think about the idea of trying to change an organisation based on what's happening around us, the individual needs to be able to influence the agenda. And not just one agenda, but the commercial agenda, the people agenda, the, the IT agenda, well, whatever it is. And to be able to integrate across those functions in order to be able to, to have that influence. And if you can't do that, the organisation will not change and therefore we will not be effective leaders. Uh, and then the third thing is advice. I, I often say that we, we spend our lives in our function talking externally and listening externally. And there is a real responsibility to bring that into the organisation and talk about what's happening. Uh, and on the basis of that, to advise our business leaders about what they say, what they do, um, what issues are out there. And that advice piece is really, really important. So influence, challenge, advise are the big, for me, leadership building blocks that the leader uh, in this function now needs to, now needs to have. Well, Sean, thank you very much indeed for your time. That's been a fantastic interview from our point of view, and, and lots of interesting things that you know I've I've, I've thoroughly uh, uh, appreciate being able to talk about, and I'm sure council members in the wider world will also uh, find this to be interesting. Thank you very much indeed for your time. You're welcome.